Welcome to No Church Answers, a weekly roundtable Bible discussion for men. We're not pastors, just regular guys talking about scriptures and their own spiritual journeys. And now, here's your host, Bill Cox. And welcome, everybody. My name is Bill Cox, and this is No Church Answers. This is a discussion for the spiritual man, a special one, and this is no church answers, and you aren't going to get them here. And what better group of guys to have than the group from Man Up Spiritual Oasis and their podcast? They've been doing almost 250 of them. And at this point in time, I'm going to go ahead and introduce the panel, not only by what they do, but who they are. And I want to start off with, he is a former world-class policy writer, a current professional gambler. He's also the show producer, Mr. Steve Titch. Hey, Steve. Oh. <laughs> and a former prosecutor, a current attorney. And in the past, he's been a carpenter and a guitarist. We call him the judge, Michael Cropper. Hey, man, hey, Mike. How are you? <laughs> a big deal in talent development. And he's also a proud Houston Cougar. Uh, we call him the Professor. Uh, Robert Koshu is here. Hello, Robert. And my name is Bill Cox. I am basically, well, I'm I'm a indie filmmaker, kind of a writer, and I work as a contractor so I can pay for my writing and my <laughs> in, indie filmmaking. And this is, we're talking about Easter, which should be the... Super Bowl of the Christian calendar. I want to go ahead and start with the overview. Let's go ahead with the producer, Mr. Steve Titch. Interesting you call it the Super Bowl. It's certainly where the rubber hits the road, the resurrection. Uh, it's the essence of Christianity. It has to be dealt with. Uh, if you're, you're really not a Christian if you reject the resurrection. And Now, I can respect someone who chooses not to believe uh, if I really don't respect someone who wants to be spiritual and believes everything in the Bible, but wants to explain away the resurrection that is a really allegorical or symbolic, and it didn't really happen, uh, the resurrection validates everything in the Bible that has come before it. Simply I, I as that. that, it's Jesus demonstrating his lordship of the creation. And really, when we get into it, it's, it's really the why, the why behind everything Christians want to try to live their lives as and according to. Excellent uh, judge. In the Garden of Eden, man <laughs> had the opportunity to live self life. Uh, it validates everything. The, 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 uh, the historian, and not the judge, the historian. I try to go back to being right. <laughs> right. Well, folks, in the Garden of Eden, man had the opportunity to live forever. God created man as a righteous being, and He gave him access to the tree of life. It's in Genesis three twenty two. If you want to check what I'm saying, however, man's decision to disobey God brought sin into the man's nature. And God had to remove him from the garden because the man learned of the knowledge of good and evil. Genesis 3.23. He could no longer have access to the tree of life. Now, the, pa the path to God then became difficult, and we could no longer fellowship with God as before. You see, God is righteous. He's pure righteousness, and he cannot have sin in his presence. In order to remove the sin in our lives, we had to sacrifice perfect animals so that their blood could atone for our sin. Again, this is Genesis 3.21, Leviticus 1, 4 through 5. Now, God loves us very, very much. God again gave us an opportunity to obtain eternal life without the yearly animal sacrifice. It's our redemption could only be fulfilled by a perfect sacrifice offered for our sin. And God himself had to provide the sacrifice which could restore our relationship to him. God provided the perfect sacrifice through the death of his son. Steve has aptly mentioned that, and we'll all be mentioning that through this, uh, through this video cast. The eternal life of, that God provides was sealed with the resurrection of his son from the grave. For man to experience this salvation experience, he must turn from the sin he was born into 
and believe that Jesus is God's perfect sacrifice for our sin. And he must take this truth as the focus of his life. Bill? Excellent, uh, Professor. All of human history hinges on three days. God himself lives on earth for 33 years. He is crucified, stayed dead for three days, and then the resurrection happens. Everything that happens in human history after that is different than everything that happened in human history before that. And that is the essence and crux. And I'm like, Steve, you, you know, if you want to deny the resurrection, please stop calling yourself a Christian <laughs> and telling people, well, I'm a Christian. No, you're not. You're not, period. It is a hardcore physical resurrection in a body that I'll be the first to admit, I don't think we understand what it truly means. I have some theories about it, but there is obviously Jesus with a physical body. We have stories of him eating with the disciples. He's, the, the first time the disciples really see him, he's actually on the shore of the Lake of Sea of Galilee cooking dinner for him. <laughs> it's not like he's appearing as this ghostly form. He's over there tending a fire and cooking fish. You know, it is very obvious. It is a physical resurrection in a body that somehow we can't understand. But it validates what happened on Friday with the crucifixion, where the sin is paid for. And one, one of the things that a lot of people see it and read it and hear about it, in the scripture it tells us there was a veil of the temple. And this veil of the temple was what separated what was called the Holy of Holies, where they kept the Ark of the Covenant, which wasn't there at the time, by the way, but from everything else. And it was to separate the presence of God. At the resurrection, that veil is torn from top to bottom the, the and opened up. The resurrection, though, is the, the, the crucifixion isn't the end. That's the important thing. The yeah, resurrection oh, inverts yeah. everything. Oh, absolutely. That's why, that's why it's important. Not so much Jesus died for our sins. Yep. That, that That's the splits validation. The, splits, <laughs> the, splits the veil yep. of the temple. Access to God is reopened. But then... Everything about the last should be first. Suddenly, the, the order is inverted. I mean, we, two, three days ago, he was talking to Pilate, who everyone thought was essentially the representative of Augustus, yep. of, of Tiberius, the god, on earth. And suddenly, here we got this going on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and with that, we're going to go ahead and take a break. This is Dojo Chancers. We'll be back in just a moment. Hi, I'm Bill Cox, host of No Church Answers and director of Man Up, Spiritual Oasis for Men. We hope you enjoy our show as much as we enjoy doing it. But our ministry needs your support if we are to continue to bring our TV show, our podcast, our live shows to men seeking spiritual refreshment. For as little as $5 a month, you can become a patron of Man Up, Spiritual Oasis. Get more details at our page on patreon.com. If you would like to support us directly, you can make a contribution through PayPal at donate at manupmedia.org. All contributions are tax deductible. We're not pastors, just regular guys. So whether you're successful or struggling, we hope to bring you the good news of God's saving grace as we share our own spiritual journeys, please consider supporting Man Up and No Church Answers today. And welcome, everybody. This is No Church Answers. We are back. We are talking about Easter. And at this point in time, I'm going to read some scripture from both Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and a second passage from John also. After the Sabbath at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, they shook and became like dead men. But when the women looked up, 
they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You were looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and all to the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women because their words seemed to them like nonsense. So Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciple, who had reached the tomb first, also went inside. He saw and believed. For God so loved the world, he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Steve Titch. I'm going to move to uh, to Robert in a minute because he's he's probably got the most notes on this. But you know, we've we've all heard it preached on, so I'll just mention it. Uh, Jesus appears first to women, and women testify to his resurrection. And women in this time of of the first century, their testimony didn't count. And secondly, we we don't see the apostles believing immediately. There, they don't believe it. It's right, right there. They, they can't. They, they, the word. They, the women seem to be jabbering nonsense. Although they do go out and check the same it out. Thing. Yes, you would have thought the same I'll thing. Forgive me, but no, I probably would do the same thing, Steve. Yeah. Sorry, I'm sorry. No, 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 that's what. That's the well, point. Well, hind, hindsight's twenty twenty though. Yes. It's all I mean, here we're yes. here yes. we're two thousand <laughs> years back, and then mm -hmm. and we can say, oh well, how how could they not? How could no. they not believe it? Well. <laughs> It never happened. Well, they, it, well it, it never happened, and then they were perplexed by the entire situation. Uh, yes. because, because, yeah. because you you have to put yourself in their shoes. So their shoes, we come into Jerusalem. Yay, mm -hmm. palm singing, Hosanna is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we go to the temple, and we basically clean the temple out again, mm -hmm. second time, you know. We teach. The Pharisees try to trap you. Yeah, no. We had this Passover meal, which is very symbolic of everything that's about to happen. And during the meal, Jesus says, by the way, I'm being killed tomorrow. And one of you is going to turn me over. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. And you're all like, what, what, what? And Peter right. goes through. Peter, and I like how Peter gets called out. Tell my disciples, and Peter. And Peter. That's because, a fact. Because, because Peter is thinking. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, 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 Absolutely. Yeah. But Peter is thinking that, hey, I'm 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 in bad shape now because, yeah. you know, I've denied him three times. And and then they watch him die, and they're thinking, it is over. And and I want you to remember, at the resurrection, there's one disciple present, John. The rest of them have scattered to the wind, and they are in hiding. And I really picture them in Saturday, either in not all together. I think they're in small clumps around town, freaking out. Well, wouldn't you? Oh, I mean, dude, I mean, oh, okay. I'm next. I mean, think about it. <laughs> think about it. I mean, any time that you're in a group, yep, you're in a group, and obviously there is a huge commotion around you. And as far as rock stardom goes. Jesus was it. Oh, okay. He, without a doubt. W without a doubt. He gets publicly taken out. And you're one of his inner circle. 
I mean, are you going to just stand? You're, and, you're on. You're, you're on most wanted. Well, right? Right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You're you're, you're on most wanted. You know, this is the fact. Yeah, I, I can't. Clean. I can't blame them for scattering. Not necessarily being a coward, but okay. Let's sit back. What exactly has happened here? Well, uh, I, I, I think they're completely. Bummed. I mean, the, well, oh, yeah, no, 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 I, I yeah. said this. This was supposed to be the Messiah. This was supposed to be the Absolutely. crowning moment. He's going to march in during the Passover phase, and and and, and let's you know, let's see David reincarnated. Let's see the, the kingdom of God. Is all all this it's lore gonna change. in the yeah. Old Testament that you know, with Ezekiel bringing down the fire. This is this is it. This is the spectacle, and suddenly he's arrested. And crucified with a bunch of with two criminals. I mean, the, the guy, the, the 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 depression. Like it's like victory snatched from you know defeat snatched well, from the that, but, but Remember, victory. they all left their professions. Mm -hmm. Matthew was probably yes. at least in the upper middle class. Mm -hmm. Peter and James and John. Everybody talks about them as these poor fishermen. Mm -hmm. They were small business owners. Yeah, that's they were right. entrepreneurs. That's right. Mm -hmm. that's right. They With a family it. business. It wasn't right. one of those deals where they were, you know, oh, mm -hmm. we're poor and don't. No, they had the only, actually, probably the only poor members mm -hmm. of Jesus' inner circle were probably Jesus himself, mm -hmm. quite obviously. Right. The zealot one. Mm -hmm. And then Andrew, who had been following John for a while. Everybody else probably left a thriving, mm -hmm. what we would consider profession. To follow mm -hmm. Jesus. So, okay, I gave up everything. I followed this guy. Three through, years. Oh, mm -hmm. three years. And right. now mm -hmm. this has happened, and, and I'm in trouble. The other aspect, we, they think I'm in the Roman aspect. because they, But from a religious perspective, I, Jesus was... The, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the Sanhedrin turned them over to the Romans, but he was convicted by the Sanhedrin of blasphemy. That is These correct. These guys' status in their own religion... With their with with, with the found, you know the 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 Sadducees and the Pharisees are claiming judgment that these guys now are not real Jews. They're apostates. They're blasphemers. So they're sitting, probably worrying about their own immortal souls at this point. Right. Yeah. Oh I yeah. There. Real quick. Yeah. A, a little bit different. Uh, so how could they miss it? How could I miss it if I were back then? Mm -hmm. And then we okay. come back yeah. to that, which said <laughs> the disciples were taught by Jesus, and they found him to be one extraordinary teacher. They followed him, just like you guys said. They memorized the information he taught, but they did not really understand everything. That goes without saying, right? Even Jesus knew they wouldn't understand mm -hmm. it till after he was dead and rebirthed. Okay? Mm -hmm. After seeing Jesus do many miracles, they even saw him raise Lazarus from the mm -hmm. dead. They still did not understand everything. Um, and, and Jesus gave them authority and sent them out to minister. They cast out demons. They healed the sick. They had the power of God at their fingertips. They still didn't understand it. So here's, here's a key to me that, that's important. First of all, Jesus knew they wouldn't understand. Number two, the Holy Spirit was not sent yet. And he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you after I am arose. I need to leave you. I can't teach you any longer. I've got to go back to heaven, and I've got to send the Holy Spirit who will teach you and open your eyes to all these things, and it will come upon you with great power. So everybody missed what Jesus told them about his resurrection. Even the women missed the idea. The only thing was that they were loyal to him and, and went to uh, prepare his body, right? And that's when they saw the They weren't angels. going to see a resurrection. Mm -hmm. They were yeah. going to finish uh -huh. what they exactly. couldn't finish Friday night. The women night. missed it, too. So this, here's the point, folks. The story of Jesus seems like a fairy tale. It is Satan's effective scheme to describe the death and re resurrection of Jesus as a hoax. And he's infamous for that. So don't forget that, folks. He's created enough other religions out there to try to distract you from the resurrection of the dead and from Jesus Christ, from whom, of which, Robert Appley stated, we begin our history. Yep. Okay, guys, go, go, go ahead. Oh, yeah. And I find it most interesting, the Gospel of Mark, the most reliable manuscripts we have of the Gospel of Mark, actually end with, so they went out quickly and f died and fled from the tomb, and they tr for they trembled and were amazed, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Then there's this whole story of Mary Magdalene seeing Jesus mm -hmm. afterwards. That, several scholars think, was added, mm -hmm. you know, but it ends there. And I think it ends there because 
the story of the resurrection is so powerful that it causes us to tremble and be afraid because the resurrection itself, as Steve said, validates that crucifixion. And what does it truly mean if I don't believe in Jesus at that point? Excellent. And with that, we're going to go ahead and take our break. This is No Church Answers. We will be right back. And welcome back. This is No Church Answers. We are talking about the resurrection and judge. Yes. Um, the, the last statement here on John 20, folks, John went into the tomb and he saw and believed. That just, and, and what did you guys just say? He was the one standing at the cross with Mary, mm -hmm. Jesus' mother. He was the one that didn't run away either. Mm -hmm. Everybody ran away except John, and John was the first to say, see mm -hmm. what the ladies professed to him and mm -hmm. witnessed to him, and he believed. And then the rest of them had to see Jesus yep. in, in mm -hmm. uh, Galilee, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Whatever happens in your own personal life, there is obviously the physical component of it. But then we need to look deeper into our own personal lives. There are spiritual implications of things that we do that were important to people and people that are important to us. And that's one of the big lessons I think that people miss with this uh, resurrection story. Not only is, yes, the resurrection story about Jesus, but in a way, it's about our own selves, our own lives, and how we apply it as well. I think it comes down to how do we live as Christians, tr as we, yeah. truly in light of the fact that death isn't the end, that we live in a, in, a, in a world where there are inexplicable things that have happened, that uh, a, a book that tells us about God, or a series of the Bible tells us about God. And remember, this: the God in the Bible is not, generally is running counter to all of human society, the, even, even the Jewish culture of the Old Testament, the prophets are constantly pushing back against this. It's, it's countercultural. As much as you want to believe that the Bible fits in with, oh, my life is going right along like it is, you probably can find it. But if you look a little deeper and you study it, you should at least be questioning the way sometimes you ch the choices you make. And that, that idea of the resurrection, like, if you accept the resurrection as truth, you've got to accept the God of the Bible as true. And everything the God of, God of the Bible stands, is, 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 as I've said before on this and in our podcast, it's inverted. It truly is. The last shall be first. The, the schmo at the bottom of the social, cultural, human pyramid is highly valued in God's eyes. And this, this, if we as Christians are really called to live in a world where death has been defeated and, th and, and think about just on that, and it's, yes, it does send shudder, shudders down your spine. Death isn't the end. We may not know exactly what comes after, but it's not the final word. Excellent. And we're coming down to the end of No Church Answers. We we'll just want to get some... Okay practical takeaways from the fellows and start with the professor. So it's really all about how, what you do in light of the resurrection. How do we, how do we, for guys, Hey, how do you act at work because of the resurrection? That's, that's one of the key things I like because there's so many Christians out there that there's the Sunday Joe <laughs> and the Monday Joe at work that is, a totally different person. And, or and, Bill. Yeah, or Bill. Or Bill. But, but it really is. It's one of those things where, True. you know, Absolutely. how do you interact yeah. on a daily basis and you do it because of the resurrection? It changed the world and it's really 
a second beginning of history for mankind at that point. Excellent. Uh, judge, a takeaway. Yes. Um, so as, what Robert mentioned, how do we as men live the resurrection in our daily lives, folks? And what is our takeaway? First of all, folks, we must realize that we were created. We are not an accident. We are not a cell that divided and divided and divided and di divided a billion trillion times and become, had arms and eyes and everything like that. We must believe that God created us. Now, the, and, and when you believe that, then you have to believe that God created us for a purpose. And that's to serve him, folks. And that means putting him first in our lives. We, we men of no church answers, believe that Jesus is Lord. As you have known now, uh, Jesus is the ever-loving and ever-caring, merciful side of God in the flesh. Jesus told his disciples that God sent him to die because of his great uh, love for mankind, John 3, 16. Before he died, Jesus told the disciples they should love each other as Jesus loved them, John 13, 34. He also stated that everyone will know that they are his disciples by their love for each other. So takeaways. Folks, the Easter is about, about upon us, and we will celebrate again the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We ask you to invite Jesus into your heart by simple prayer if you have not. And all you have to say are these simple words. You can say them with me if you wish to. Jesus, I am a sinner, and I have sinned. I ask you to forgive me of my sin and come into my heart. I repent of my sin. I turn my life over to you, and I follow you. Folks, this is the foundation of our faith. Jesus came to earth to live a perfect life and to be the perfect sacrifice for our sins. He was placed on a cross and died a horrible death. But, as Steve said, Robert and Bill have said, he arose to fulfill God's promise to give us eternal life. Happy Easter. Oh, excellent. Uh, and producer Steve Ditch. Very quickly, that's the gospel right there. Forget about the rules. Forget about everything. Um, just understand that there was this great intervention in human history and as as christians we we should be you know be very mindful of that and if you're new to the faith or 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 looking at the faith that's what mike what mike said wraps it up very eloquently christ god entered the world died for us rose from the dead to seal everything yes yep that's right Excellent. And thanks so much for tuning in. This is No Church Answers. My name is Bill Cox. I'd really like to thank the guys. Remember the reason for the season. Happy Easter. You've been watching No Church Answers, a weekly roundtable Bible discussion for men, a production of Man Up Spiritual Oasis. Want more? Check out the Man Up Spiritual Oasis for Men podcast, available wherever you download your podcast. And to learn more about us and how to support our ministry, visit our website at www.man-upspiritualoasis.com.